everyone, Britt here with Torque. Are you still wasting time writing queries and coding to add steps to your workflows? If you are, you're gonna wanna listen up because trust me, I get it. It is frustrating and time consuming. So here at Torque, we just launched a brand new feature that takes the manual work out of building steps and eliminates the need for advanced coding expertise. You can build custom steps in just a few minutes with the click of a button or the wave of a magic wand. Step Builder infinitely expands your options to create new custom steps with no coding required. When we say limitless integrations, trust us, we mean it. The only limit is your imagination. Let's take a quick look at how Step Builder brings simplicity and efficiency to Torque's already expansive no-code user experience. All right, check this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the documentation page for the API that we would like to use. And we're gonna select the endpoint that we wanna add. So in this case, it's the host information. So I'm just gonna go down here and copy the curl. We're gonna go back and paste it right here. And I can see that HTTP step was added with the URL of the endpoint. Okay, see that here? So now let's go ahead and click on the magic wand and go to step builder, let's do it. I'm gonna go ahead and add all the step details that we want. So let's copy and paste the description. I'm gonna copy this here. I'm gonna go back and let's paste it right here in the description. And let's give it a logical name documentation URL. So I'm gonna type in host information. And so we're just gonna copy and paste the source URL. So we're gonna go here and copy. We're gonna paste it into the documentation URL. And so you'll note that we already have a vendor that was previously set. So I'm gonna look down here, I'm gonna search for it. And select it. And so the vendor is the vendor that will appear under the step finder. So these are all the vendors over here on the left. And so now let's move on and configure all the parameters for these steps. So we're going to go to the HTTP request and we'll start selecting values that we want to add as a parameter. So I'm going to start with IP and I can see it was added here. And on the right side, this is the preview for the step. So now let's add in the API key as well. And for this case, I also want to add some HTTP default parameter. So see here on timeout, I'm gonna go ahead and click display by default in the configuration panel. So now moving on, let's configure the parameters. So this one we would like to be named IP. We already have it right here. So go ahead and select it. And this one is an integration value, right? An API key. So we're just gonna select the user integration value right here and select the API key. We can see that everything was updated right on the right corner over here on the right side of the screen. So let's go to the documentation again and just copy the response. Copy the response. And we're gonna paste it right here. And voila, we have everything we need for the step. So now the last thing that we want to do is do a little test run before saving it to make sure we have everything configured. So let's enter an IP right here and let's select the integration and so we can just test run it. So I'm going to go ahead and click test run up here. And here is the response from the vendor. Amazing. All right, now we see that everything is working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save it here on the right. And we can see that it was added to our custom tab. Every step can be edited once it's already been saved. So if you need to add anything or change anything in the future, don't worry, we got you covered. Thanks for watching this demo and we'll see you in the next one.